It was just like any other night when I started my shift at the Crestview gas station. Bright lights buzzed above, and the rain hit the roof with a steady beat. It was after 11 p.m., and the office was comfortable and quiet, which was excellent for me since I worked nights. It was peaceful, so I had time to think. But tonight, something didn't feel right. Despite the warmth inside, the air felt chilly, and the darkness outside seemed to press harder on the windows than normal. The highway was empty when I looked out the window. I was half waiting for a car to break the quiet, but nothing happened. I didn't know it at the time, but it was the calm before the storm. As a big rig pulled into the station, a loud truck engine roared to life. I saw a man climb out of the rain-stained window. He was big and dark in the dim light, just like any other late-night visitor. But something about the way he kept moving his eyes around uncomfortably made my stomach knot. He shook off the rain as he walked in and gave me a fake big smile. Ugh, this weather is awful, he mumbled while grabbing a coffee. His eyes kept flitting around the store like he was looking for something specific. Are you all alone here? He finally asked. My nerves tingled with dread. I lied. Nope, my co-workers in the back, I whispered, my voice barely audible. The man grabbed his coffee and went back to his truck, but he didn't leave. He just sat there with the engine roaring like a scary animal waiting to attack. I tried to ignore the feeling that he was watching me and claimed that I was busy organizing the shelves. That's when Emma, a lady who frequents our store at night, walked in for her coffee. Seeing her warm face made me feel better for a little bit. She noticed I seemed tense and asked if something was wrong. I said no and tried to smile, but she didn't stay long. As soon as she left, the driver came back in, but this time he seemed more suspicious and rude. He leaned on the bar, his eyes staring at me, and said, I stay in a nearby hotel. This gas station must see all sorts of people, right? The trucker's question started to freak me out even more. He kept asking weird stuff about the store's security system and what time we closed. My heart beats faster and faster. I tried to avoid answering his questions, and I told him to leave because we were expecting a delivery truck soon. He walked out again but didn't drive away. Instead, he walked around outside the store, looking in through the windows every now and then. My heart was pounding in my chest. Everything in my body was telling me something terrible was about to happen. The rain got even harder, sounding like loud drum beats on the roof, almost like a warning. Just after 1 a.m., the driver came back in, his face looking really angry. As he walked toward the desk, he was holding a metal bar and hitting it against his hand. Open the safe, he yelled in a scary voice. I gulped, trying to act calm, but my brain was rushing, trying to figure out a way to escape. My hand shook as I reached under the counter, secretly pushing the quiet warning. We don't have a safe here, I stammered, trying to buy some time. His eyes got really dark and angry. He yelled in a growl, raising the metal bar as if he were about to strike me. Don't lie to me. I scrambled back and bumped into the shelf behind me, scared to breathe. Just as he was about to come around the counter, a car's headlights filled the parking lot. The trucker stopped moving, and the metal bar stuck in the air. We heard a car door slam and then footsteps running towards the store. The door flew open and there stood Emma, soaked from the rain. Oh no, I forgot my phone charger, she said in a happy voice, but her eyes darted around the room taking everything in. Her sudden arrival confused the driver, and that gave me a tiny bit of hope. In the next few scary seconds, I grabbed a big flashlight from under the counter. I gripped it really tight, ready to fight back if I had to. Emma kept talking, 
trying to get the driver to forget about me. Her voice sounded normal, but I could tell she was nervous too. The trucker looked back and forth between us, trying to decide what to do. Finally, he growled and threw the metal bar on the ground before running out of the store. Relief washed over me, but it quickly went away as I grabbed the phone and called 911. My boy shook as I told the operator what happened. Within minutes, the rain-soaked parking lot was filled with bright police lights. The cops ran in and taped off the area, then asked us both what happened. Emma stayed by my side the whole time, cooling me down as I told the police about the scary meeting. My body was still jittery from the adrenaline rush. The cops said they would check the area for the trucker, but even after they left, I still felt like he was out there somewhere in the dark. Emma drove me home. Her car felt cozy and safe compared to the cold, wet night. I kept looking out the window, afraid the driver might be following us with his headlights off. When we got to my place, I thanked her a million times for helping me. I couldn't even explain how grateful I was that she showed up. Back home, I finally relaxed and let out a big breath. All night, I kept seeing the driver tapping the metal bar on the counter and his scary eyes looking at me. It freaked me out so much that I decided to take a few days off work. The memory of that night will probably stick with me forever. Crestview gas station might never feel as quiet again, but at least for now, I was safe at home. Working nights at the small store can be scary. It's quiet on the street and the store lights are low. Most nights are calm because not many people come in. My friend Mark works with me though, so it's not so bad. We mostly see the same people over and over again, and things are pretty boring. But lately, a new customer has consistently shown up. At first he seemed okay, but he started acting weird. After buying something, he would walk around the store for a long time, and he kept looking at me. I thought maybe he was just lonely at first, but now it creeps me out. There's something strange about him, but I can't figure out what it is. Working nights with Mark used to be easy. We got along well and the time flew by. But things got tense when that strange customer started coming in every night. He'd buy little things and try to talk to me, but his questions kept getting more personal. I tried to be kind but also avoid him, but he wouldn't leave me alone. One night he even asked about my work schedule and where I lived. That scared me really bad. Mark saw I was freaked out and started looking out for me, but this customer's behavior was getting weirder and crazier. One night, things with the creepy customer got way too close for comfort. I was stocking shells when he sidled up to me, nearly breathing down my neck. He asked about my plans after work. His voice was way too friendly, like we were old pals. I tried to be polite but vague, but he wouldn't take the hint. He just kept hovering. The next night, guess who showed up again? However, this time, he had flowers and a creepy note that said something about how pretty I was and how he couldn't wait to see me again. My heart hammered in my chest the card had my name on it. Mark thought I should report him, but I was scared things would get worse. Deep down though, I knew this was way out of line. Things spiraled fast after that. It felt like the customer started showing up whenever I took a break, just watching me from outside like a creepy ghost. Even when he wasn't there, I could swear I felt his eyes on me. And every night, there'd be another weird surprise a small thing but each one felt more personal like he knew way too much about me. The shop even put in more security cameras and told us to be extra careful. But the feeling of dread never left me. I had bills to pay, so I kept working. But every creak and shadow in the store sent shivers down my spine. I couldn't shake the feeling that something terrible was about to happen. 
One night, a crazy storm hit, and the whole store went black. The emergency lights barely flickered on, making creepy shadows dance on the walls. My heart pounded as the strange customer suddenly barged through the front door. We were stuck inside with him, and a flickering light showed a scary look on his face like he was totally obsessed with me. Emily, I'm here for you, he creeped out, making me shiver. Mark tried to talk him down, but the guy was totally crazy. A fight broke out Mark was trying to protect me while I fumbled with the quiet alarm button. It was clear this guy wanted to take me, and he wouldn't hesitate to use force. Just when things seemed lost, the cops showed up thanks to the quiet warning. They grabbed the guy and arrested him, but the store was a mess. My whole body shook as I told the cops what happened. Mark stayed with me, which helped a little, but the truth hit me hard I almost got taken. I couldn't handle another night at the store after that, so I took some time off work. The fear from that night wouldn't go away, it followed me everywhere. I didn't feel safe anymore, not even in a place I used to think was okay. Working nights again just felt too scary after that. I found a new job somewhere with better security, like more cameras and stuff. Mark continued to work at the store, but he was much more careful. We still talked though, and what we went through together made us even better friends. I also started taking self-defense classes to learn how to protect myself in case something like that ever happened again. That whole thing was a wake-up call, you never really know what people are capable of. Now, my safety comes first, no matter what. Even though that night was scary, it also made me stronger. I wouldn't let fear rule me anymore. Looking back, I understand how important it is to be aware of your surroundings and trust your gut. That whole thing with the creeper guy showed how dangerous people can get when they're obsessed. But it also showed the good side of people Mark was there for me the whole time, and having a friend like that really helped. We went through something awful together, but our friendship got even better because of it. I learned that if something feels wrong, you have to listen to your feelings and take action. It was a scary time, but it made me tougher and more ready to face whatever comes next. The gas station was empty again that night. My shift began late at night at 11 p.m. and went all night until morning. Being alone in the dark for so long made it feel really long and scary. Most nights my job was dull. People paid their bills, I stocked the shelves and I watched the security cameras. Tom, one of my co-workers, always left at 11 p.m., leaving me all by myself all night. I worked this job to pay for college, but it wasn't fun being alone at night. It was very quiet. The only things I could hear were the lights and the odd car going by. Then, around 1 am, a strange man came in. He looked messy and worried, and he only bought a pack of gum. But he continued to look at me and the cameras in a way that made me feel uneasy. Even after he left, he just stood outside the gas station walking back and forth. I checked the cameras, and I saw him walking in circles around the building peeking in at the windows every now and then. I started to feel really scared when the phone rang at 2 a.m. I picked it up, but instead of a typical chat, I just heard someone breathing deeply. Then, they hung up. This creepy call happened a few more times, and with each call, I got more and more scared. Being all alone at the gas station in the middle of the night, with a scary guy outside and weird phone calls was just too much. All of a sudden, at 3 am, all the lights went out. It was pitch black, except for the backup generator kicking in, making the lights flash strangely. I worried and tried calling my co-worker Tom for help, but my phone wouldn't get a signal. 
Then, guess who showed up again? The creepy man from before. He was banging on the locked door, yelling at me to let him in. He said his car had broken down and he needed to use the phone. I didn't know if I should believe him, but I also didn't want to be mean. I told him I'd call someone to help with his car, but he wouldn't take no for an answer. He started getting really violent, yelling even louder. In order to safeguard myself from this frightening individual, I was aware that I had to maintain my composure and devise a strategy. My heart pounded like a drum solo. My breath caught in my throat as the man's shouts got louder and more frightening. He beat on the door with all his might, like he was trying to break it down. Fear choked me, but I knew I couldn't worry. Grabbing a big flashlight for protection, I hid behind the bar, taking deep breaths to calm myself. The silence after his screaming stopped was even scarier. Then, a scary sound glass breaking. He had broken a window and was reaching in to open the door. At that moment, I knew I had to act. With a rush of energy, I grabbed the flashlight tighter and prepared to protect myself. Just then, out of nowhere, car lights cut through the blackness. It was like a magic trick. A car pulled in and guess who it was? Steve, the nice guy who always comes in for coffee and surprise he's a police officer too, but he wasn't working at the time. He saw the broken window and the creepy guy trying to get in. Steve jumped out of his car like a superhero and yelled at the man who got scared and ran away into the night. Steve called his police friends for help, and soon there were a bunch of them looking everywhere for the bad guy. They didn't find him that night, but I finally felt safe again. Steve even stayed with me until more police officers came, cooling me down and making sure I was okay. I was so lucky he showed up just when I needed him most. The next day, I told my boss everything that happened. He listened carefully and took it very seriously. To make the gas station safer, he added a special button I could press if I felt scared again, and even made the windows extra strong so no one could break them easily. This whole event taught me two important things, to always trust my gut feeling about danger and to stay calm even when I'm scared. Even though the whole thing was scary, I chose to keep working nights, but now I was way more careful and prepared. As I watched the security cameras, I felt super alert, ready for anything. The night seemed different now, but I wasn't scared anymore. When a new customer came in late that night, I looked them right in the eye, knowing I wasn't alone anymore. I was ready to keep myself safe, no matter what, It was usually chill to work nights at the super drugstore. After midnight, in this quiet area near the highway, things were very quiet. My name is Daniel, and as the only pharmacist on shift, I liked it when people came in late at night to get medicine or other things. It seemed like nothing was wrong one night the buzz of the lights, the faint hum of cars on the highway. It went off without a hitch, and was almost boring until 1 am. At that moment, a black car pulled up and parked right outside the store. No one got out, but the machine kept going. At first I was curious, but then I started to feel a little worried. For the next half hour, that black car sat there, engine roaring, but nobody came out. The headlights stayed on, making creepy shadows dance on the path. I tried to focus on restocking shelves and counting medicine, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. It was very quiet in the store, and the clock had a very loud ticking sound. I looked through the security cameras to see who was in the car and to see something normal. But with every minute that passed, I got more and more worried. Guess what? This was just the beginning of a very long and strange night. Finally, the car door creaked open and a man in a hooded sweatshirt stepped out. 
I couldn't see his face because of the hat, which made him look even creepier. He wandered aimlessly through the store, gathering items without truly examining them. When he came to the bar, his questions were super weird and scary. He wanted to know about the pharmacy's setup, the cameras, and how many people came in at night. My gut felt yelled that something was wrong, but I tried to be professional and answer his questions nicely, hoping he'd leave quickly. But instead, he just hung around, making me more and more nervous by the second. It felt like forever, but eventually, the hooded guy finally left. I was so happy. But that feeling didn't last long. Just one hour later, another man burst into the store. This one was way more pushy. He wanted strong medicine without a prescription, and he seemed really on edge, looking at the door all the time like he was waiting for someone. I knew I couldn't give him the medicine without a prescription, so I said no. But that made him really mad, and he stormed out, slamming the door behind him. My heart is racing now. I peeked outside and saw dark people moving around in the black car. I realized this night was going to be a lot longer than I thought, and I was all alone. The two men came back together, this time acting way more scary. One had a knife, the other a baseball bat. They yelled at me to open the pharmacy safe, frightening me if I didn't. I was stuck behind the bar, nowhere to run and the phone was too far to reach. My hands were shaking, but I secretly hit a hidden button under the counter to call the cops. I really hoped they'd get here fast. The men started throwing stuff off the shelves in a rage. I tried to stay cool and ask them to stop, but they just got angry. I was so scared, understanding how dangerous things had gotten. The shop turned into a total mess as the men went crazy looking for the safe. They knocked over shelves and medicine and other items flew everywhere. Then, out of nowhere, we heard police sirens screaming in the distance. The evil guys freaked out, their eyes huge with fear. They dropped everything and ran for the exit. I watched them race out of the store and speed away in their black car just as the cops burst through the door, guns drawn. Thankfully, the danger was over. The cops checked everything out, but I wasn't hurt. I was just really scared. It took a while for my heart to stop beating as I realized how close I had come to getting hurt by those scary guys. The police took a long statement from me, offering to send more police cars around the drugstore at night to keep an eye on things. That made me feel a little better, but I was still really scared. I chose to take some time off work to relax and heal from the whole thing. While I was packing up my stuff, I kept thinking about what happened. The quiet store felt extra creepy now, and I kept picturing those scary men and the mess they made. It hit me how dangerous it could be to work alone at night. Even the idea of going back to work made my stomach hurt. For now, I just needed some time to heal and figure out what I wanted to do next. It would be pretty simple to work nights at a small shop open 24 hours a day while I was in college. That money would help me pay for school and rent. My name is Jamie. Most nights were dull, with only a few regulars and one person coming in late at night. I worked from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., when everyone else seemed to be asleep. The store felt strange and quiet because of the bright lights. I got used to the same routine every night, and even liked the quiet time by myself. At midnight, when I was beginning to get bored, a man walked in. He had a scruffy beard and old, dirty clothes on. He didn't look at me when he said hello, his eyes kept going back and forth. He muttered something I didn't understand and then walked around the shop. I observed him closely, as his behavior seemed unusual. He kept looking at certain things on the shelves and then putting them back without buying anything. It felt like he was waiting for someone 
or something to happen. The store was almost empty, so it was even stranger that he was there. I felt weird inside, but I tried to work through it and pay attention to him. The man came up to the bar and asked for something really weird, which we didn't have at all. His voice was shaky and he wouldn't look at me, I said we didn't have it, and he laughed in a funny way. Then he started walking around and talking to himself, and he kept looking at me. It was really creepy when everyone else left, and it was just the two of us. The store was super quiet, and I started to feel scared. I tried to stay cool and keep my distance, ready to call for help if I needed to. Finally he just bought some gum and left. I was pleased he left, but I still felt scared. I watched him go outside and stand under the streetlight, looking at the store. My heart was beating really fast. I tried to finish up my work and waited until 6 am when my shift was over. When I finally walked outside it was cold and dark. I kept looking behind me, thinking someone was following me. I saw a dark person behind some trees and cars. I started walking faster and faster because I was so scared. When I finally got to my apartment, I locked the door and felt safe for the first time in a long time. Inside my room, I tried to calm down. I told myself I was just imagining things. There was no one outside when I checked the locks and window. I was so tired so I went to bed, but I couldn't sleep. Every little sound in the room scared me. Then, around 3 in the morning, I heard a scratching noise at the door. My heart was pounding so fast. I walked slowly to the door and looked through the little hole. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was the same man from the store trying to open the door. I was so scared, I didn't know what to do. I grabbed my phone and called the cops, but my hands were shaking so much. The cops came really fast, but the man was gone. They talked to me and stated that they would watch my room more closely. I installed more locks on the door and purchased a camera. But I was still scared all the time. Every shade and noise made me jump. I didn't feel safe anymore. Because I was always looking over my shoulder and expecting to see the man again, I didn't want to work nights. My job which used to be boring is now scary and awful. I kept thinking about the man trying to open my door. Time passed, and the scary man didn't come back. The cops looked for him, but they couldn't find him. Slowly, I started to feel a little better, but I was still really scared. One night, I was watching the movies on my security camera, and what did I see? The guy. He was off and outside my apartment, hiding in the dark. My heart was pounding so fast. I realized he wasn't just some stranger, he was watching me. The cops came to my room more often, but I still felt scared. Every night, I checked all the locks and looked out the window. Even a little noise made my heart race. After a while, the man stopped showing up. I don't know if he moved away or if the cops scared him. What happened to me was really scary and I felt so sad. I quit my job at the store and moved to a new apartment in a different part of town. I got more locks and a security camera. I was frightened for a long time, but slowly I started to feel better. I still think about that scary man and I'm always careful. Thinking about what happened, I realized how scary it really was. It wasn't just a creepy thing, it was really dangerous. I learned to trust my gut and to be careful all the time. I learned to pay attention to what's around me and to be ready for anything. I'm okay now, but I still think about that scary night. It taught me to be careful even when you think you're safe. Most of the time, my shift at the small diner on the edge of town was quiet but tonight felt different. My name is Jenna and I work nights to pay my bills as a college student. It's cute inside, with warm lights and old-fashioned seats, but it can get creepy at night. I've worked here for months, 
clearing tables, restocking shelves and helping customers late at night. By midnight, everyone has left, leaving me to my thoughts and the bright lights above. I had no idea this night would get really weird. The night started normally, with cleaning up after dinner. I cleaned the tables, put things back behind the bar, and watched the door for someone, like a truck driver, who might be late. There were not many people in the diner by midnight. It was relaxing to wipe down tables but something felt off. It was very quiet, even less so than usual. Outside I saw a beat up old car parked across the street, engine going but nobody got out. I tried to ignore the creepy feeling, thinking I was just picturing things. I went back to wiping tables, but a terrible feeling wouldn't go away, making me worried. I couldn't take my eyes off the car while I cleaned. Finally, a dark figure in a hood stepped out and started moving uncomfortably, looking inside every few seconds. My stomach did flip-flops, but I tried to focus on wiping tables. Then, the bell over the door clanged. The figure rushed in, looking messy and jittery. He sat in a corner seat, his eyes darting everywhere. When I approached to ask what he wanted, he ordered something odd off the menu and detailed how to make it. His voice was friendly, but kind of creepy firm too. I just nodded, feeling scared, and headed back to the kitchen with goosebumps all over. The hooded guy still freaked me out. While his strange food was cooking, he kept fumbling with a big bumpy bag, looking around like he was waiting for someone. I stayed by the bar, watching him like a hawk. I could not shake the sensation that something untoward was about to transpire, as his entire performance was exceedingly peculiar. Even the diner's security camera showed him acting strange, making me even more worried. I claimed to be busy cleaning, but my brain was running. Who was this guy and what did he want? The quiet diner felt super tense like the calm before a big storm. Deep down, I knew this night was about to get really dangerous. The weird guy wouldn't stop acting strange. He jumped up and marched to the counter, not nervous anymore, but acting really mad. He asked to use the diner's phone, saying his car broke down and he needed help. My gut told me this was terrible news. I lied and told him the phone was only for workers, hoping to calm him down. But he got even madder, yelling so loudly that it echoed in the empty diner. The few people still eating left quickly, feeling the scary vibes. My heart raced as I tried to figure out how to stop him from freaking out. He was acting so unstable, it was like he could hurt someone, so I had to be careful. Things got even worse when the stranger turned violent. He lunged across the counter, trying to grab me, I jumped back just in time, barely missing his hand. Scared, I grabbed a kitchen knife without his knowledge, just in case. My hands were shaking, but I pretended to be okay. I offered to call a tow truck for his car, trying to sound brave. But the guy was acting crazy talking about people following him everywhere. I knew I had to keep talking to him, stall for time, and maybe even calm him down. The whole situation felt super dangerous, like something out of a scary movie. Every second felt like forever as I waited for a chance to call for help. Just like I worried, things were about to get worse. The door jingled again, and a serious-looking lady walked in. She said she was the stranger's sister, and explained that he was really scared and nervous, and that he'd escaped from a place nearby that helped people like him. The lady seemed to cool him down, talking to him softly, and asking him to leave with her. The scary guy went from agitated to confused, and followed her out without much fight. Relief rushed over me, but I was still shaking like a leaf. Now that the lady explained everything, it all made sense why he was acting so weird. 
I watched them leave, my heart still racing from all the excitement. Thankfully, things hadn't gotten physical. With the scary guy and his sister gone, I locked the door fast and called the place he escaped from to tell them what happened. The cops showed up a few minutes later and I told them everything, my voice still a little shaky. They promised to find the pair and make sure they got the help they needed. While they wrote down everything I said, it finally hit me what had just happened. The diner felt super quiet now, almost too quiet, and the shadows seemed even creepier. The cops left, and I was alone again, but the feeling of fear wouldn't go away. I knew that from now on, I'd be way more careful at night, forever changed by this crazy event. Even after the scary guy and his sister left, I couldn't stop feeling nervous. Every little creak and shadow seemed way louder and more terrifying than normal. It made me think about how crazy things can get on the night shift, how one minute everything's normal, and the next it's total chaos. That whole thing shook me up, but it also made me more aware of my surroundings. I knew I had to be ready for anything that happened at night, because there's no telling what might go down. I kept thinking about the weird guy and his sister, wondering what their story was. That night definitely taught me a hard lesson about the risks that can be hidden anywhere and how important it is to stay on guard. It was a night I'd never forget for sure. The little hotel on the edge of town is closed for the night. Most of the time it's quiet here because not many people stay or leave late. My name is Selena, and I work at the front desk at night. At about 1, 0 am I'm doing what I always do, which is to check the computer to see who has rooms and make sure everything is okay. A man walks in all of a sudden. He acts very shaky and looks like he's in his late 40s. His hair is going gray. His clothes are a mess and he looks like he's looking for something because his eyes look everywhere. Oddly, he doesn't have any big bags with him. He doesn't even look at me when I give him the key to his room. He just grabs it and runs off to his room without saying a word. Something about him makes me feel bad. A few hours go by, and I can't help but keep watching the security cameras. This guy is acting super strange. I see him walking back and forth outside his room for a while before finally going in. Then he keeps coming out and going back in again, looking more and more worried each time. Around 2.30 am, I see him on camera, standing by the door you can use to get out in case of a fire. He's looking around all scared. It is possible that I should inquire as to whether he requires assistance with anything, however, upon recognizing me, he immediately vanishes. Now I'm getting really creeped out. I go back to my desk, but I just can't stop feeling like something awful is about to happen. This guy's weird actions keep happening, and I'm starting to think something fishy is going on. I watch the cameras closely and see a dark figure creeping by his door. At first I thought it was someone else, but then I realized it was him. But he's moving in a weird and twitchy way, not like himself. My heart starts beating like a drum solo, and I decide I have to talk to him again. I take a big breath and walk down the hall to his room. The closer I get, the more I hear vague noises coming from inside, like someone's fighting. I knock on the door, but nobody answers. I'm stuck there with my heart beating in my chest, not sure what to do next. This feeling of fear is getting worse by the second, and I know I can't just ignore it. I've got to see what's going on in there. My heart feels like it's going to jump out of my throat. For certain situations, I use the special key to open the door. The room is empty, but everything's a mess. The window is wide open, and cold air is blowing in like crazy. When I see the guy running for the woods outside, panic hits me like a wave. 
Without even thinking, I grab a flashlight and run after him, disappearing into the darkness. It's spooky quiet in the forest, except for the sound of sticks crunching under my feet and leaves moving in the wind. The pressure is on. I can barely breathe, but I have to keep this guy in sight. Every step I take feels both scary and determined, like I'm scared, but I won't give up. I finally catch up to the guy, and he's digging like crazy at the bottom of a big tree. He's weirdly talking to himself and when he sees me his eyes bug out like he's seen a ghost. He yells stuff that doesn't make sense, like someone's after him and he needs to find a hidden spot. He's totally freaking out and I can tell he's scared Steph. As I get closer, I see a small hole in the ground, newly dug, with a metal box inside. The guy is still terrified and tells me he's hiding from someone who wants to kill him and that box has stuff that can save his life. Now I understand that things are way more serious than I thought, and we're both in big trouble. I try to calm the guy down and convince him to come back to the hotel with me. I tell him we'll figure out a way to get help. Walking back through the woods, my heart feels like it's gonna explode with every step. Back at the hotel, I call the cops right away and tell them everything that happened as best as I can remember. The cops come super fast, and the guy finally looks relaxed. They take him away to keep him safe, and I hear them talking about how important he is in a big crime case. As the feeling of being scared starts to fade, I feel both relief and a little fear at the same time. This night has been the craziest thing ever, like something out of a scary movie. The cops stick around for a while asking me questions about what happened and making sure the room is safe. I'm alone again, and my mind keeps repeating everything that happened tonight. I'm glad the guy is okay, but man, that whole thing freaked me out. I think about how close we both came to getting really hurt, and how maybe I even helped save his life by following him. Even though I was scared and wasn't sure what to do, I'm gonna keep working nights. Knowing I made a big difference makes me feel good. This whole thing changed me for sure, but it also made me stronger. Now I know that even in quiet places, danger can be hiding around the corner and I'm ready to face it next time. It's a scary night shift for me, Joss. At this apartment building, I'm the security guard. My job starts late at 10 p.m. and lasts all through the night until the morning, 6 a.m. Everyone else is usually sleeping during this time, so things get really quiet. This house is old, with long halls that are only dimly lit. It can feel a little creepy, especially in the dark. There are always creaks and groans coming from the old walls and floors, but I'm okay with it now. Every night, I do the same things to keep everyone safe. I watch the security cameras and walk around the building to check on everything. Just like any other night, I started my job by making sure all the doors in the building were locked tight. The basement always freaks me out a little with its dimming lights and stale air that smells like old stuff. But hey, you've got to check it down there too. Back at my desk, I started looking at the security cameras. The night feels super long, and it's so quiet it almost makes me want to sleep on the job. I take a sip of coffee to wake myself up. So far, everything seems normal. The only sounds I hear are the building's running air conditioner, and sometimes faint footsteps of people coming home late at night. Then, bam, around 2.30 in the morning, something weird happens. In the basement, I see a strange shadow on the camera screen. Nobody is ever down there this late at night. My heart jumps into my throat, and I lean in super close to the computer for a better look. The shadow is all dark and fuzzy, but it's moving slowly and carefully. 
I watch for a while, hoping it's just someone who lives here and forgot something. But my stomach feels funny like something's not right. I gotta check it out. I grab my flashlight, feeling scared but determined, and head downstairs to the basement. As I walk, my hair stands on end. The lights in the basement flash on and off, making creepy shadows on the walls as I walk down the stairs. Every step I take sounds loud in the quiet, making me even more nervous. I shine my flashlight around, calling out, Hello, is anyone down here? There's a bunch of storage boxes, washing machines, and old furniture everywhere, so it's difficult to see well. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw something move. The dark figure is closer now, and I can sort of make out that it's a man wearing a hood that hides his face. My heart races as I take a deep breath and walk slowly towards him. Hey, this part of the building is off limits. Can you tell me who you are? I say, trying to sound brave even though I'm scared. The man doesn't say anything back. He mumbles something I can't understand and starts walking towards me. I take a big step back, my flashlight shaking like crazy. As he gets closer, I see something shiny in his hand a knife. Panic bursts in my stomach. I yell, stop, don't come any closer, but he keeps going, his eyes looking wild and confused. I turn and run back towards the downstairs door as fast as I can. My footsteps sound super loud in the small room. I reach the door, slam it shut, and lock it with shaking hands. Then I race back to my desk, my brain going a million miles an hour. I grab the phone and call the cops, hoping they get here fast. I can barely breathe as I tell the dispatcher what's going on, making sure they know the man has a knife. It feels like forever, but a few minutes later, the cops arrive with their sirens screaming in the night. My whole body is jittery as I lead them down to the basement. They take out their guns and shine their flashlights into the darkness as they carefully enter. My heart is beating like a drum as I watch them search the basement. Suddenly, I hear a loud noise and yelling. Then, a few seconds later, the cops come out, holding on to the man who's now screaming words that don't make sense. They found him hiding in one of the storage units, looking messy and confused. It seems like he might not be thinking straight. The cops take the guy away and I let out a big breath of relief. They tell me he doesn't have a home and snuck into the building to live in the basement for a while. That explains why he acted so weird and scary. The cops say they'll take him to a place where he can get help. I'm still freaked out, but I'm glad things didn't get worse. The cops ask me some questions about what happened, and then I go back to my work. My whole body feels jittery, and I try to calm down and think about what just went down. The rest of the night goes by in a flash. As the sun starts to rise, I think about everything that happened. I'm thankful the cops came so fast and that I knew what to do to stay safe. But I still feel a little scared, even though it's over. I told the building manager what happened and that they should make the building tighter security-wise so this doesn't happen again. When my shift ends, I tell the security guard coming on after me best luck, hoping they never have to go through something like that. Walking home, I can't help but feel a little scared, knowing how awful things could have gotten. I work nights as a security guard, not at a fancy building, but at a bunch of old buildings in an industrial area. It's super quiet most of the time, except for maybe a machine humming far away in the darkness. My job is simple check all the doors and windows of the buildings to make sure nobody sneaks in, and write down anything weird that happens. It's usually pretty boring, so quiet it makes your brain melt. I have keys to all the buildings and a walkie-talkie in case of problems, but I never had to use them, 
until one night. That's the night things got creepy, the night that changed everything. On a normal night, I do the same things over and over. First, I walk around each building, shining my flashlight through the windows and checking the doorknobs to make sure they're locked tight. The buildings are old and the floors creak like crazy when I walk, which adds to the scary feeling. I write down everything I check in my notes, even little things in case they're important later. Most nights, there's nothing to report, just the quiet of empty storage rooms. But this night wasn't like the others. As I got closer to the biggest building, something felt wrong. The silence seemed even quieter, and I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me from the shadows. Finally, I reached the biggest builder. I did my regular check on the doors and windows, but when I walked around the side, my flashlight caught something weird a window on the ground floor was cracked open a tiny bit. My heart jumped into my throat. I checked that window every single night for months, and it was always shut tight. Feeling nervous, I crept closer and peeked inside. But it was pitch black, and I couldn't see anything. I knew I had to check it out. Taking a deep breath of bravery, I climbed through the window, holding my flashlight high to see where I was going. The building was huge, with tall boxes everywhere, creating a scary maze of shadows. I walked super slowly, listening for any kind of noise and feeling really scared. My flashlight only showed dust and old stuff on the shelves. Every time the floor creaked, it sounded super loud in the quiet, and I couldn't stop feeling like someone else was there with me. I checked every single hallway, corner and dusty nook, but nothing seemed out of place. After what felt like forever, I made it back to the window, climbed out and shut it tight, locking it extra well. My heart was still beating as I wrote down what happened in my logbook. I tried to calm down and keep going with my rounds, but I kept thinking about that open window. Why was it open? It didn't make sense, and I had a bad feeling in my stomach that wouldn't go away. As I kept walking around checking the other buildings, I felt more and more freaked out. All I could think about was the big building. What if someone was actually in there? I decided I had to go back and check again. I pulled my truck up close to the building, and a shiver ran down my back. The window was open again. This time, I felt scared but also really motivated. I couldn't just leave it. I climbed back in through the window and yelled out, Hello, anyone there? My voice sounded super loud in the giant room, but I didn't hear anything back. Holding my flashlight tight, I started searching the building again, feeling scared with every step. This time, while I was looking, I saw something weird in the dust on the floor fresh tracks. They led toward the back of the building. I followed them and found a secret door behind a bunch of stacked boxes. My heart started beating really fast as I opened the door. There were stairs going down to a basement. I went down slowly, shining my flashlight around. It looked like an old forgotten storage place but there were signs someone had been down here recently like a bed made out of stuff they found, empty food bags, and some personal items. Someone had been secretly living down here. That's when I heard muffled noises coming from upstairs. Panic hit me hard. I had behind a big machine and watched as a messy looking person came down the stairs into the basement. They moved fast grabbing their stuff like they didn't expect anyone to be there. While the scary person was grabbing their stuff, I knew I had to get out of there. My heart was beating in my chest as I tiptoed back up the stairs and closed the secret door very quietly. I locked it tight and sprinted back to my truck as fast as I could, my brain racing a million miles an hour. Who was that person? How long had they been quietly living down there? It freaked me out to know they'd been hiding from me all this time. 
I drove a safe distance away from the building and called the cops, telling them everything that happened. Relief rushed over me like a big wave, but I couldn't help but feel scared too, thinking about what could have happened if they found me. The cops arrived really fast and locked down the building. They found stuff that showed the person had been living down there for a while, but the person itself was gone. I told the warehouse boss everything, and they tightened up security so something like this wouldn't happen again. I wrote a report about everything for the cops, and they said they'd take care of it. But that night will always stick with me, I still work nights, but now I'm extra careful giving way more attention to everything around me, always on the lookout for anyone trying to sneak in. My job isn't boring anymore, it's a steady memory of that scary night and the secrets the shadows can hide. Looking back on that night, I understand how scary things could have gotten. The person living in the basement was real, and all the stuff they left behind showed it. I learned to listen more to my gut and pay attention to even the smallest weird things I see. Though I'm not as scared anymore, that night will always stick with me. It's a warning that even boring jobs can have surprises, not always good ones. The building is safe now, but shadows can hide a lot, and I'm always on the lookout, ready for whatever comes my way at night. Welcome. My name is Jake and I work as a security guard at night. I monitor many office buildings, but this one is the creepiest. Only a few floors remain occupied in the nearly empty old house. The halls are dark, and sounds can be heard all over the place. Going through the floors to make sure that nothing is wrong is easy for me. If I find anything, I tell someone. But this place felt different from the first night. It felt like it was alive or something. Even when nobody was around, I felt alone. One week into the job, I was walking around the third floor when I heard footsteps bouncing off the walls in the empty halls. It was as clear as day that someone was following me. I spun around really fast, shining my light everywhere, but there was nothing there. I searched every office on that floor, but found none open. I tried to tell myself it wasn't real. Maybe I was just imagining things or the sound was playing tricks on me. But deep down, I knew I really heard those footsteps. And after that, the silence felt super heavy, like someone was watching me even though I couldn't see them. The next time I patrolled, I noticed that the lights on the fourth floor were acting strange. They kept flashing on and off really fast like a dance light. This was strange because they had just fixed the electrical stuff there. I went to the repair room to check the switches, but everything looked okay. As I walked back out, the lights went even more crazy, flashing so fast that I could barely see. A shiver ran down my back as I stood there, everything going dark on and off. Then, bam, all of the lights went out completely. Just as quickly, they came back on, as normal as could be. My heart was pounding, and I got out of there quickly. Another night on the fifth floor, I saw a door that's always locked crack open a tiny bit. This door led to a dusty old storage room nobody ever used. Curiosity got the better of me, so I pushed the door open and peeked inside. It was dark filled with old furniture and papers covered in dust. As I looked around with my flashlight, the door slammed shut behind me with a loud boom. I jumped and ran back to the door, trying to open it, but it wouldn't move. I worried a little, pulling on the handle with all my might until the door finally creaked open. I practically fell out, feeling a blast of cold air, as if someone was right behind me in the dark. During another round on the sixth floor, I saw a dark shadowy person way down the hall. I yelled out hello, but nobody answered. The person disappeared around the turn, and my heart hammered in my chest. I chased after it, but when I reached the corner, poof, the hallway was completely empty. 
I checked every single room and closet, but there was nothing there. The whole time, I felt like hidden eyes were watching me, giving me the creeps. My hands were shaking as I tried to calm myself down. Maybe it was just shadows playing tricks on my eyes, or maybe I was letting my mind run wild. But with each weird thing that happened, I felt more and more scared. Back in the security office, I found a super old report hidden away in a box. It was about a worker who mysteriously disappeared years ago. And guess what? The report outlined all the same scary stuff I was going through sounds out of nowhere, lights acting crazy, and doors opening and closing by themselves. As I read, a shiver ran down my spine. Could all this be linked to the lost guy? I felt like I had to solve this puzzle. But at the same time, I was super scared about what I might find. This creepy building was hiding some dark secrets, and I was getting closer to them. Determined to figure out what was going on, I set up a camera in the hallway where I saw the dark figure. The next morning, I checked the recording and saw something that freaked me out totally. In the film, as I was setting up the camera, the dark person appeared right behind me. For a second, I could even see his face. It was the missing worker from the report. He looked super sad and scared like he was trying to tell me something. I knew I had to call the cops right away. The video proof was clear something bad had happened here, and the ghost of the lost worker was stuck in the building. I called the cops and showed them the video. The puzzle was solved quickly after they began investigating. It turns out that the basement of the building was closed off years ago because it was dangerous. And guess what they found down there? The remains of the lost worker. He must have gotten stuck in the building and couldn't escape. Finding him finally explained the weird stuff happening. Once they gave him a proper funeral, the disruption stopped totally. Even though I was relieved that the secret was over, the whole event freaked me out big time. Can't shake the image of the sad, scared worker. I put in a request to move to a different building, hoping to ditch the creepy thoughts of that abandoned office. Driving away on my last night, I took a final look back. The building stood quiet, almost peaceful. Everything I went through still gave me chills, but I was glad it was over. Facing something so weird definitely changed me, I really hoped to never deal with anything like that again, but deep down, I knew some things would stick with you forever. The night shift might be over, but the shades of that building will probably follow me for a long, long time.